Hello everyone and welcome to a bonus episode of this Nintendo Life. My name is NBZ and um, might as well call this this PlayStation Life because I'm joined by uh, everyone's favourite new Sony fanboy, Bally. He's here, he has a PlayStation 5 and we're here to talk about it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this is a... Uh, a bonus show that we're doing for everybody. Uh, usually stuff like this would go up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Life, where we do uh, Nintendo bonus shows, where we talk about Xbox and PlayStation and PC and all those other things that go on outside of Nintendo in video games. Um, and yeah, so if you want to check that out, you can head on over there, and for a dollar you can uh, listen to some other stuff like this if you like what you hear here as we talk about the PlayStation 5. Bali, yes. welcome to the future you're in it for the first time ever? Probably not. You own a more powerful piece of hardware than me. TBH, you had a GameCube before I did. Is you the know, GameCube you were... more powerful? I guess it's more powerful than your PS1, PS1. at the time. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> that was a while the, ago, wasn't for it? For the first time since probably the GameCube, Bally now owns a more powerful piece of hardware than, yeah. me, than the PlayStation 5. Uh, Bally, how, how's it been treating you? How's the future looking? That thing is powerful. The future is bright. The future is big like unbelievably uh-huh. big i already knew this thing yes. was 14 inches tall but it doesn't change the shocking nature of it when you stand it up next to your television so yeah it's it's quite something um when i start talking about like the unboxing and that sure. process and things how so, when, okay so were you like sitting there waiting on friday whenever i think the 19th it was when it came out yes um, so, you've, so you basically Thursday. had over a week with the playstation 5 now so like a good amount of time to yeah. get to grips with it figure it out know what's going on um and obviously we had to wait an additional week in the uk for it to come out here how was that uh, week of like being on twitter and seeing everyone <laughs> in america and other places using their ps5 and knowing that yeah. you had this disc for miles morales sitting there doing nothing oh God, yeah uh, not being able to play it it was quite frustrating but like all weeks in lockdown working from home um the weekends come around quick i find like it's just like you think yeah. you, you, you do a few days of work and it's like bam the weekend's here so it didn't feel like it took too long to come um and yeah i was obviously refreshing amazon it wasn't like uh, you know getting through your art exam to get to your Wii or oh, anything. Oh god, that, that was horrendous. That was like a <laughs> 9 to 12 hour art exam Monday, Wednesday, Friday and on the Friday was the day the Wii came out. It was like uh-huh. this light at the end of the tunnel of this hell I was living through but yeah, god, that that it wasn't quite that emotional uh roller coaster i don't think we'll ever have like that type of hype again for a system right like that was a kind of special source uh, yeah the the age we were and and stuff like that um but i totally get hyped for consoles but it's you're right it's not quite the same as the ds and the wii back back in the day those yes another level for sure uh but i'm sure you're excited to play your playstation oh very much so yeah um so when did it come uh what was happening and how did you get things out the box uh the interesting thing i found online of like people unboxing the xbox is the xbox has this like pristine like delicious packaging and it just looks so (laughs) well put together and everything i don't know what the playstation experience is like yeah so that's something i do want to weigh in first of all is i've unboxed quite a few games consoles in the last few years so i've unboxed nintendo switch and xbox uh i forgot the name of it one s one s uh and i've unboxed a ps4 back in 2018 so this is like now my fourth console in like three Three years years. yeah wow so (laughs) i've experienced all the different companies in their unboxing processes and honestly sony are bottom of the pile when it comes to like (laughs) how good the box feels, the ease of getting it out, this sort of thing. Like Nintendo are probably at the top because they're, you know, they're, they're Japanese. I mean, Sony are kind of Japanese, but that's another well, debate. Well, at this point in time, like the, a lot of Sony has run out of the US. So sure. it's kind of changed to some degree. But, but the, yeah. the boxing process of the Switch was just so... I mean, it's they've got the advantage of it being a very small system and it's got the dock and obviously it's very slick. Uh, but then compare that to, say, the PS4, which was like this crummy box that you just kind of pull out and you're, you're kind of shocked at how small the amount of styrofoam is in there protecting the system itself. And mm. uh, I even think like the build quality of the PS4 feels a bit, Tacky is an over- overstatement, but it doesn't feel quite as solid as like an Xbox One S like brick. And I also found the Xbox One S unboxing process very smooth. Like it was very neatly laid out within the box, very clear what things were. 
Uh, and then yeah, the PS5 comes, and the box weighs an absolute ton. It's obviously huge because this thing is huge. <laughs> How like when this shows up at your door, right? Like, is the guy standing there with it, or you know, obviously COVID, I guess someone has to like leave it there and stand back from it. Like, how large is the size of this box? Does it come up to your waist? Like, what are we talking about in terms of like the cardboard that encases? Yeah, it? so Amazon always do. They always do like box within a box. Um, it's just their sort of protocol at the moment and i don't know how much extra protection it gives it i don't know enough about that sort of thing so Wait, so we've got a bit of matroska doll going on here with like right. multiple boxes so it's a box within a box and yeah it probably comes up to like i don't know if you stood it on its top uh the the big box would have definitely come like past my knee and wow um yeah this thing is just i can't over egg enough how big this thing is it's just so big and i think i was actually a little bit um surprised at how small it was in comparison because you showed me before it came here's a picture of where it's going to go on my tv and i was like so it's totally going to be the size of your tv right and then you showed me a picture of it next to the tv and it wasn't actually that tall compared to it so maybe it's just like the vantage point you took that photo from but it didn't look that big to me if you want proof that photos don't do reality justice the ps5 is the perfect example (laughs) honestly like i i agree it didn't look that big in that photo yeah. i sent you um but it's just categorically it's so much bigger than that photo suggests like f- i know that cameras do all sorts of weird stuff with sizing and this sort of thing it's not they yeah. don't exactly replicate how your eye takes in the world so yeah it, it wasn't quite accurate but pulling it out of the box um it's a because P- playstation do this weird thing where there's like an external card very thin cardboard box with the pic- printed picture on it so you're slight it's ve- it's always very awkward sliding out of that in the first place and then yeah you get in there and you've got your what you got your power cable a, a USB-C charging cable which is so there's nice. no um, power brick that comes with there's this no right? power because brick it's inside just, the yeah, actual system this goes yeah. straight in i think the cable for the power is maybe three four foot long which is a decent yeah. length the ps4 one is really short i found and is yeah. kind of annoying it's on the it shorter end it's a long it's not much longer than ps4 i would argue um but i'd already planned out like the space on my entertainment system to, to put it because i've got it on top of the entertainment system and right do you have enough like um extender power cable things in order to fit all of the yeah stuff we've got a bunch of plugs around the block around the back and like multi-taps and things so it's all fine and I would say, like, I'm glad we have it up there because this thing runs pretty damn hot out the back, I would say. It's, right. It runs... Just play... I mean, I have been playing it quite a bit, so I've played... I'm on, like, 18 hours of Mars Morales and, like, uh-huh. seven hours of Astro's Playroom, and that's after, like, a week and a bit. So it's a lot, and it has been running hot, I would say. Uh, I would say, noise-wise, it's... It's pretty good. It's not so I've got it on top of my system. So I think any noise it makes is more audible than what it would be if it was under my game system, right. under my entertainment yeah. system. Um, you can always hear the disc boot like start up when I've got a disc in. So I've got Mars Morales hard copy in. You can always hear that boot up at the start, but that's expected with a disc drive. Uh, and but, I think that's just an authentication thing because since yeah. the PlayStation Four the disc doesn't really do anything anymore basically it installs itself to the hard drive anyway the disc is basically just a authenticator to say yes right. you can play this yeah and once that's happened you do occasionally hear like it almost is like a pc in the sense that the fan sometimes will just have a big session of blowing and then stop again like it's right, not like yeah. it's constant it, it'll be like right it's overheated a bit we're gonna whap the fan run really loud it'll just take off from the airport as we say you know <laughs> for yeah, a little exactly. bit. so it feels very pc like in, in those kind of ways and it makes like bleeps and blops and noises and it's not completely silent but it, it's nothing like as loud as like my ps4 was getting sure um so but we are we're getting there right man like the series x looks like a pc tower to some degree even if a thin one and um and this thing's just just a fucking monster and i mean you did a joke tweet of like finally decided to get a gaming (laughs) pc but like hey that's kind of real like the the architecture of both these systems is uh power pc so like they are very much on that trend uh and so 
so yeah it, we're kind of in that place now even to the degree where miles morales allows you to switch between do you want higher frame rate or higher resolution i mean we've already right. had that with the pro models of the the other consoles but still we're uh we're in this weird place yeah. uh with these systems now and other sort of console stuff i should should say like the stand seems good and necessary how was it, how easy was it slash hard was it to attach that to the so bottom so one of the things i was doing while waiting for the system to come was watch a couple of youtube videos about <laughs> just get the tutorials prepped basically how to do it yeah it's it's super simple um so i've got my ps5 vertical and the stand works for both vertical and horizontal uh there's a screw st- stored within the stand um if you're if you're attaching the stand vertically there's a little black rubber disc in the bottom, a very small one that you pull out where the screw goes. And then there's actually even a a place within the stand to store that little circular rubber disc so Uh you don't lose it for future. Sure. And then you take out the screw, put the base on, and then just a a standard like flat to uh, um, screwdriver or just like screw that in nicely and i think you do need it i think the thing is so tall that without it i definitely worry about like knocking it over or especially if you're charging um the controller out the front using the USB C or something i think it's really risky so i'd highly recommend using the stand um, right because it does seem like it could stand up without it it's just it yeah. definitely would tip over essentially if yeah. it didn't have the balance on either and side. i also even think like heat heat wise overheating wise it's a really good idea because the stand essentially makes the whole thing levitate which i think even <laughs> though most of the heat comes out the back it, it it is still a good idea i think just to get some cool air underneath the thing so sure i think yeah. it works well um what else shall we talk about should we talk about booting up the system all this sort of thing yeah yeah like so obviously you have had a 4k tv for a while now yeah and you talking to me about, you know, you've watched stuff on Netflix in 4K and I'm like, that's not real 4K because there's video compression going on and you're like, I don't notice that. And I'm like, well, you're a noob and blah, blah, blah. Um, but this is properly for the first time, really true uncompressed, like 4K image signal that is coming from a device in your house. Has d- Did that impact you as soon as you turned it on or was it when you got in the game that it started to show like oh no this does look a lot better than what i've seen before i think even turning it on it looks i wouldn't say it looks 4k i think it looks better than 1080p i think it's not sure (laughs) in a game where you're like okay this is 4k and i'd say that more so with spider-man more so than astro bot although there are parts of astro's playroom that are, are gorgeous definitely so it's just booting up the menu and like logging in with the like particle effects in the menu background it's very clear like this is this is next gen you know this all this sort of thing and and the process of like signing in and stuff is very straightforward um i just sort of signed in my now without playstation plus though right because you didn't have that is the process of getting stuff over have you tried doing any of that of like transferring your save data via ps4 um, i know there's like a physical way to do it as well um have you even attempted any of that stuff yet not really and i was thinking like the only game i'd really want to bring over is apex legends and we were just saying how like ea have their own system of bringing over save files so it's so it's not save file with that well, it's like your, day, account, your um, yeah yeah your account progress is on their server side right because right. What, no matter where you are whatever console you have uh you can I, I mean it depends they don't have cross progression unfortunately so if you've played on pc and you log into playstation you'll start a new account but the idea is that yes if you are going from ps4 to ps5 your sony login should provide you with hey now you are just back to your character essentially yeah. because so, ea handles it all on their end essentially so i've really not tried any of that and i don't really feel the need to because i'm kind of the per- sort of person who's like right i play a game i finish it and that's that i'm not really up for replaying ps4 games i've beaten and then any new games are going to come to ps5 anyway obviously so i just and also given the fact that it's not just like this flat improvement of games in the same way the series x is i think that is one of the big flaws of ps5 in that even though it's not something i've experienced is like just down just playing a game on ps5 that was on ps4 doesn't guarantee it will run particularly better they've done that for a few games like ghost of tsushima for example and probably like the other first party games but 
beyond that, my understanding is there's not a ton where it's noticeably just like considerably better other than stuff like loading times which right um, so you've not tried any ps4 games on your ps5 as of yet of like putting it in because i think ghost of tsushima would be a good example to be like oh now i can really tell the difference right between what it was before and what it is now yeah and yeah i mean i could try ghost of tsushima but uh and as you say as i've not got ps plus i couldn't bring over my save file in from right cloud so but I might even like start a new game or something. I don't particularly care just because I've already like platinumed that game. But um, right, yeah, it might be worth doing. It just takes a while to download it. I well, I guess I put the disc in, don't I? So it's not that bad. Well, yeah. How have download times been? I guess you've only downloaded one thing with Spider Man Remastered, but Sony infamously on PlayStation Four have fucking terrible download speeds. Um, just really awfully slow. And even you've got really good internet. Yeah. And I know that it still will take you a while to update Apex or whatever. Um, because Sony's infrastructure is bad. What I've heard from people is that the download speeds are improved on PS5. Yeah. Is, is that the case? They're definitely improved. I don't think they're like insane. And when I say insane, sometimes when I'm downloading games on my Xbox One, um, I can go up to like 140, 150 megabits per second. And yeah. that obviously does huge gigabytes in the space of minutes. And I've not had that so far with the PS5 um which is maybe a shame when i have such good internet and with with my xbox it really feels like it depends on the time of day just certain times it'll just absolutely hammer through a download and other times it's a little bit slower so it's a little inconsistent in that sense but and that's hard to sometimes know whether it's my end or their end or combination so it's quicker than ps4 but as you say that's not saying a ton Uh, and i have only downloaded uh spider-man remastered from 2018 so definitely cool. more to try there so um, yeah I, I imagine then that when you go to your account page of like showing all your games does it show your available games for like digital stuff you've purchased on ps4 would like yeah, so, journey show up on the list and stuff like that so basically everything every game that i've played as like ballyman 91 appears there so i can see like stuff like playtime and trophies which are really is really nice uh, playtime is a little bit skewed where Hmm. certain games that i've played for let's say more than a year and a half a year ago sometimes they'll just have a really borked uh gameplay time like it thinks i've played four hours of red dead 2 for some reason when i obviously played like 40 to 50 of that game but who knows bali maybe you were just in a fugue state and you imagined all of red <laughs> dead 2 and uh you know never really happened but uh other games it is accurate and and that is cool i find that for the more recent ones but basically i've got a list of all my playstation games and if i played it from a disc the game will appear with a padlock and the padlock basically means stick in the disc and you'll be able to play this game um, right and then games that were downloaded um it'll just have like a little download logo which means hey you can download this for free obviously well you know you already own this game you can download it sort of thing so that's yeah that's all pretty smooth from what i can see although the the shop currently is like basically empty because it's not they've not done the same thing as microsoft where they're bringing over all their games it's very much like here's some ps5 games and you can download those and the rest of the shop's fairly empty yeah that's um interesting especially because there might be some games on there that you just don't know whether they have been given some sort of update or not like journey for example would be an interesting one because i know you've said you would like to replay journey at some point yeah um that would be one to see like does it run in 4k have they it already actually they did improve the frame rate to 60 i think on ps4 anyway um but i wonder if they there's any additions to any of these games that we don't know about yet because things are getting independently updated by companies sometimes and sometimes it's just the raw power of the ps5 is boosting it for example the last guardian if you have the disc version of it without it being patched it will run at 60 because when they first put that game out on disc it had an uncapped frame rate which meant that like it was really up and down and a bit of a nightmare when they patched it they cut it down to 30 as a lock thing so if you do the download version of last guardian through the ps plus collection for example you get a worse experience than if you just have a disc without the patch. So it's one of those weird Mm. examples where a a patch makes it worse uh, just because now the power of the PS5 has the ability to run Last Guardian flawlessly at 60 frames per second, which is a little weird. Um, Yeah, yeah, that that is a shame. Um, So yeah, the the account stuff is solid. Like it it forced me into a two-step verification 
setup thing with my phone number which is nice so that all that stuff's more secure it's good to force you to do that because uh you know i have on my own accord gone and done two-step on most of the things i have accounts wise on the internet and uh most people don't do that and they don't do it unless they're forced to do it so it's uh it's it's nice that sony are doing that probably also because in their past they've had a lot of psn hacks that have happened and they yeah you know seem to not be able to get around that and it's a real bad thing so uh yeah good that you've got that set up now and it was very easy to just sort of add caroline as an account and obviously she had to do a two-step verification so that's all good found out her playtime on red dead 2 is 188 Uh hours nice Um, (laughs) very solid is that the most amount of time she's ever put into a game yes i think i think so yes well actually i think she's done over 200 on two point hospital from what i've seen on uh, oh wow really but um, yeah maybe that is the number one but uh (laughs) but still yeah she was going for like all the trophies and perfect scores in that game so yeah totally kind of crazy um so yeah we're all we're both set up on the ps5 it's all very smooth um presentation wise just like the ui i really like that when you're over a game so astro's playroom or miles Morales or something there's like a song from that game plays and you get a big image that's like a some sort of promotional art kind of it's like a splash thing. screen a isn't splash it yeah. screen that looks really nice and um i love i love that it looks really really slick but i think ui wise that's basically the only good thing good. I would say. not the only good thing but it just uh, how, where do i start it's very so so do you think that this is like the ui is terrible or is it that you haven't used it enough to get used to it right because we've always talked about how people you know shitted all over the wii u and its ui and we were like it's fine there's nothing wrong with it it's in fact pretty uh, seamless and, and works from our perspective but that's probably just because we used it so much compared to other people who didn't um, it's interesting because m- from my perspective they're really pushing trophies for example so if you're mid game in astro or spider-man or something and you press home you get this little list kind of thing appear at the bottom and it'll say right, it doesn't like go back to a home menu it basically brings up a sub menu yes. underneath the bottom of yeah. the game and it'll tell you the current level you're on how much more time it's got to go if you're subscribe to ps plus you can opt in for like a little tips system in that area the inbuilt Um, guide kind of right yeah um there's another little bit that sort of says your progress on multiple areas in and around the area you're in and then a select few trophies will appear so it'll be like oh if you do this and it'll, it'll only like just kind of drip feed you like two or three trophies and you can be like all right that's a, that's a cool idea for a trophy i'll try and get that but then if you're like someone like me who was in the process of platinum well i did platinum um astro's playroom and i'm planning to platinum miles morales um it kind of is clunky to get to your trophies because you press home you then sure you can see those three or four trophies they've selected but if you want to see your overall collection you then have to like go to the user and then from the user screen you go down to trophies and it's be- it's definitely at least two to three clicks more than it should be. Like it is ridiculous right. how long that, I mean it doesn't take long because of the loading times, it takes long because of the number of clicks you're having to make. Like it's, it's wild that something they're so keen on takes so long to get to. I'd say the same about screen capture, whether it's video or uh images and it's to get to that media area to see all your videos and image screen captures is equally as clunky when in reality it should be like a click maximum two clicks away to view those things. totally that's one of the things that i think that nintendo has surprisingly just ousted both sony and microsoft on is despite them taking the idea of the share thing like switch is by far the easiest one of like you just press the fucking button and it's done and it's there yeah and you can hold it for video and sure it's not as high quality it's only 30 seconds but my goodness the shareability on switch is by far the easiest of of the consoles from what i've seen yeah i i agree and horrendously the default for um ps5 is every single time you get a trophy it will take a 15 second video clip and put it into your your 
gallery. So just eating away at your hard drive. Exactly. Space, for basically. a hard drive which is already really small, I don't want all these 4K videos just sat in my like it's yeah. It's a lot of memory. So I had to change that default. I was happy with it taking a screenshot every time I got a trophy. I thought that was a decent one to include. So that uh, automatically happens on PS4 as well if you didn't realize. All right, yeah. Go go into your PS4 library stuff and you'll have every trophy you've ever gotten there's a screenshot there of it. Right. And um I also changed it so that if I tap once on the share button i get an image and then i tried to mirror uh, mirror the nintendo solution but you can't do a hold you have to do a double tap so if i want a video i do a double tap and if i want an image i do a single tap and annoyingly with the video it does 30 seconds and i was like that's a bit short i was missing like some runs i was trying to do in spider-man or whatever so i thought it'd be really good if i could do a minute so i go to the setting and the next one from 30 seconds is three minutes and i'm like surely you could have 60 seconds or 90 seconds before before you get to three minutes like yeah but it's, it's weird right because you can you can then take that three minutes and then probably cut it down to a minute within course, like the yeah, share function can, right yeah but yeah. it's just like i'm surprised that customizability isn't in there because you can from three minutes you can go to five minutes to 10 minutes to 15 minutes it's like okay yeah but everyone needs to chill out twitter can only take two minutes 20 why don't yep. we just <laughs> cut this right down to two minutes you know and so that's a bit clunky and all the defaults are a bit not what you would want ideally so there's lots of settings i still need to play with to make sure like my i it's kind of like visually optimized and stuff like that so i i I don't know i need need to play around with all that stuff and and so on but Is, is there any sign of like themes or anything any way to customize your home screen at this point in time or they they not done that stuff yet? not that i can see so far um and because sony have a good job of keeping up themes on ps4 obviously it does you know make the system chug a little bit i've got the cyberpunk one at the moment on my ps4 and it's like every time i load it up it like takes a few seconds to load i'd imagine that'd be much easier on ps5 just because the swiftness of getting around menus and stuff must be a lot snappier just because the ssd is yeah yeah and like I've downloaded stuff like um, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, YouTube. Right, yeah. And it's good having those. So previously, the only way we could access 4K Disney Plus or YouTube was through our smart TV. Um, and the downside of smart TVs or TVs generally is just how laggy, like, you know, a remote control is versus a gamepad. Like, it's just incredibly, like, laborious and slow. Yes. And, Sure, if you're not a gamer and you're used to using that, that's fine. But like, it f- feels far nicer like typing in stuff on the YouTube um, touchpad um, keyboard, I should say, um, on a gamepad and still having access to 4K. Because obviously I could do that on PS4, but PS4 doesn't have access to 4K on YouTube in that way. So it's nice having a PS5 where I can watch 4K videos on YouTube in that way. Um, so that's all that stuff is really solid i think and i think the the little s- switcher thing is quite good actually to go between games and disney plus yeah. or something so, like so so yeah let's talk about that because does when you switch to a video app does it keep your game suspended or does your game just close down when you switch over to amazon prime or something the game like is suspended um okay that's yeah. good at so least. that because that you is... can't do it between games like you no. can with xbox where you can have multiple games suspended but at least you can do that with netflix and amazon which is quite no good. you can't and but it's also that thing where i totally think that the series x option is way more optimal and i would want that very much so but the loading times to boot up miles morales from system being off is pretty quick same with like astro like it feels a lot snappier it's obviously not as snappy as if it was like in the suspend mode but yeah it's something you can live with it's not ideal it'd be so good if maybe a future ps5 they would incorporate it or i don't know we'll see i mean i was just talking to like alex and track the other day about Mm -hmm. the xbox having that mode and they didn't seem to even understand or care what it even was (laughs) and i sort of said but it's the benefit of like if you're playing two or three games at the same and then they were like yeah because we always play two to three games at the same time and they're making the point like they never really play more than one game at a time so i can totally see that sony have decided it's not a big deal it's really like it's a feature built around game pass right because microsoft are pushing game pass and they want you to play as many different games as possible and, and all that stuff and so 
they really have built their system around that as a idea um so it does make sense if you're jumping between things you're like oh let's check out uh you know star renegades or whatever for five minutes but i don't want to be ejected out of my overwatch lobby or, or something like that right yeah um yeah. it's it's a real smart thing totally to um, and for us like for me that is like the most cool next gen feature by far uh, and it's a bummer that sony just doesn't have it um yeah so yeah any other stuff with the uh, UI at all that you uh, have found interesting or difficult to navigate? Um, what else um, is there? I think a lot of these things will get less annoying the more you get used to them, even if the design isn't optimal. Um, so, like, the holding down of the PlayStation button, because for me, this is how I turn off my PS4, is hold down the PlayStation button, it brings up the menu, you go into rest mode, it's done. I've heard that that's not the case here, yeah. and that bums me out, because that seems like that was the smartest yeah, way to do it. Yeah, it's weird. It wasn't really a feature I used much. It was only one I used to access, like, audio settings, whereas whenever I'd sleep with my PS4, I'd always just tap home rather than hold home. So, But also, that's something I could definitely see them patching in, because I think the, the outcry for that issue has been quite large, and it's seems like a very patchable thing to do um just right. to kind of incorporate it in so yeah all that stuff is smooth i do think the bread crumbing trophy thing is something when i first saw it i was like this is stupid i don't like this but then I, it grew on me so what i mean is i was playing miles morales and i was just thinking i'm i'm i want to get platinum for this game i'm loving this game i want to get platinum what trophy shall I get next? And rather than booting up the big trophy list and trying to like read through them all in a more systematic way, I would just tap home, see the, the breadcrumbing trail that it was telling me saying, oh, you could get this trophy if you just did this thing. I'd be like, that's cool. I'll go do that thing. And then when you do it, another trophy will appear in that spot. So I, I really liked the, the gradual nature of, hey, I could get a couple of trophies, then do a mission, then collect a thing, then do this rather than like, Let's look at the large list of trophies, come back into the game, see what is, and see what we're going to do next. I liked the fact that it's very simple and stupid, but I think just the idea that the game can just breadcrumb me one or two trophies at a time can help make it feel less daunting getting them all if that makes right it's more like directed basically yeah as opposed to just saying you know if you want to go do those things you you do it on your own time basically right it's it's more like hey we do want you to go after these things even though you know i do find trophies kind of stupid still and i don't really know why people are so obsessed with them and, (laughs) and everything but there is i think part of the cool thing about trophies is if you are really enjoying a game and you do want to just keep playing it, it's just more of an excuse for you to do more stuff yeah, in it, totally. to have something to complete, as it were. Yeah, so. and I do, I do get real satisfaction when I do get more trophies, and especially a platinum. Um, I, I am kind of like platinum or bust like it's there's nothing of it right for yeah me. either like... either you're gonna go for the platinum or you just don't care about any of the trophies and you're not gonna bother with any yeah. of them basically yeah talking about platinum we should talk about Astro's Playroom. So, okay, <laughs> this is a game that I platinumed. I want. I knew I wanted to platinum. I'd heard people say it was a fairly easy platinum, and yeah, you can get the platinum in like four, five, six hours, and it's a good one to get. The Dual Sense. So yes, this controller that everyone's raving about and telling me that you can feel dust versus dirt versus sliding on ice while you're like going across it. Are, are they true people are they lying to me bally i need you to dispel all rumors <laughs> tell me for sure what does ice feel like when you're sliding on it as astro it feels great like it's it's one of these things i think it's very comparable to trying to describe vr to someone over a podcast you can say vr is incredible it's the, it's the coming of christ moment you have to try it to experience it and listening to someone talk about it on a podcast is kind of like not annoying cu- annoying <laughs> not cutting it it's like okay that's great we get everyone's into it but i'm listening to this podcast describe it and you're not telling me you know why it's so special or how it's so special sure and- i think that's one of the things right is like this sounds very cool D- does it have any effect on the way the game plays or is it just like just making the game more enjoyable as an overall experience as like a as an added level of polish to some degree yeah i think that's it i think it makes simple things more enjoyable and more interesting right. to do so astro like astrobot as a platformer in vr was a fairly simple platformer uh, but with some really cool little design features in there and I think this game 
really is the same but in a more almost mario odyssey kind of way and i mean that in a few ways so one it's like odyssey in the sense that these worlds are a bit larger and more open it's not really about linear level design two it's like it is about exploration and experiencing cool quirky things you know that feeling that you get in mario where you get a new capture mechanic and it's like wow this this has completely changed the game and this feels weird I'd say the dual sense almost feels like that in a way where you interact with something in the world and then it makes your controller vibrate or the triggers are, you know, resisting in a certain way that makes you think, wow, I just, I didn't think doing this one simple thing. And I, I really want to be careful with spoilers because I genuinely think the less you know about this game going in, the better. A bit like Mario Odyssey, like it's that kind of level of crazy weird stuff going on that the less you know about when you just experience it for the first time yourself it'll feel a lot more uh magical honestly like it it really yeah. does feel impressive so on things that people are already aware of especially in that first cooling springs area i'm gonna do the giant bomb model of just talking about <laughs> cooling springs cooling springs game of the year i've heard cooling right springs, exactly uh, yeah. so yeah stuff like the ice the sand these things it's it's a level of rumble that is taking place inside the dual sense in a way that does it, it's like there's so many different gears across the whole gear uh, dual sense and unlike something like um hd rumble it's like adding 10 times more gears than that almost like it's saying there's all these motors going up and down and throughout the entire uh dual sense that they can control when those motors doing certain things to mimic things in the environment i think this is also reinforced by the sound design coming out the speaker so for ice for sand right so i was going to ask about that is like to what extent is this enhanced like could you close your eyes and walk across sand and get the idea that you're walking across sand or is it being enhanced by the sound the the look of the game as as all that stuff kind of coming together that's a really hard question. I think you'd have to ask someone to go in um, with their eyes closed or something to try that. And if yeah. you took the sound design away of the of the mute, of the sound effects, I'd be really interested. I don't know the answer to that question. And I think, but that, you've not tried it yourself. Uh, no, but it's it, it's weird because it's mimicking the walking of Astro, where every single step he does, you can feel and every step he does you feel feels different depending on the type of surface he's on whether it's sand or metallic surface or something and that's beyond the sound design that is the way that it's vibrating like it is it is a much more acute tapping sound if it's on metal like you could imagine Mm. your hand tapping on metal versus your hand getting stuck in sand like it it genuinely does feel like that when he's walking along and yeah, and I feel like I've had a kind of similar thing like that going back to Mario Odyssey with like the zip power up where you like move the zip around and it feels like a zip being zipped up, you know. Um, but I imagine this is kind of doing that and just taking it even further. So this takes zips to another level where there are zips that you go in your costumes. Um, there are multiple right, costumes. Yeah. You've probably all seen the costume in Cooling Springs where you're a mm. frog and you're jumping and there's a resist it uses resistive triggers for that part and every world there's there's four worlds every world has its own costume so i won't spoil the other three if you've not seen them but like they're all like mobility kind of vehicle they're all mobility related they all yeah they all link to the dual sense in a unique way and those when the first five minutes you do of each new suit is like wow this is like it's like that new capturing mario odyssey feeling of I, this is wild and you really do have to experience it i th- I think that people are probably sick of hearing podcasters say that um i think it's such a good idea that this game is just like a launch game and tied into the it's on your system already you don't even have to download it it's there ready to go uh without without a patch or anything very smart move i think to just have it pre-installed straight away it means no waiting on christmas day for people to be honest who the fuck on christmas day is going to be able to get a ps5 but you know yeah um it, it is good to just have it out the box and ready to to go but this game is reinforced by the fact that it's just a really good collectathon game like yeah when you think back to like you know the spiros and odyssey to an extent like that satisfaction of exploring and collecting and all all that stuff is so satisfying i think all of the sony nods are 
incredible like actually yeah, it's incredible. just like a playstation history tour essentially right of like going through these places with little astrobots dressed up as like hey there's cat from gravity rush hey there's dante from devil may cry or like solid snake from metal gear like, yeah all these uh, franchises whether they're first party or third party they all have some history or association with playstation you know like even down to like vincent from final fantasy 7 in a uh actually no i think it's it's um alucard from symphony of the night in a coffin yes uh, in one of the yes. areas yeah and so. they really don't miss out anything like i and I'll, my like my sony knowledge isn't the best like if i could but if you looked at a list of every single sony first party game I'm confident every single one is in there in some I'm pretty capacity. sure there's a Vib Ribbon nod in there somewhere yep, as well. Yep, No, I remember yep. that one totally. Yep, um, yep. Everything is in there and it's so satisfying like to just discover them and it's very simple but and I was saying, man, even as a Nintendo fan, we have like Nintendo Land and Smash Brothers as a, a spoil as like awesome as those are and I feel spoiled with them. I really want a Nintendo version of Astro's Playroom because I want like a celebration of the hardware and characters and that sort of thing. And I just don't think Nintendo have, for some reason, Sony celebrate their hardware more than Nintendo. And that's really weird. And that kind of does make sense to some degree, right? Because they really have always been a hardware first company. Um, you know it's only in recent times i would argue that their first party lineup has become iconic in terms of characters because you think of something like playstation all-stars battle royale and it's just an embarrassment in terms of like oh we okay um good coal and evil coal from infamous two separate characters i guess which you know nintendo does that with pit and dark pit you know i'm not gonna say nintendo are better but nintendo also has like 500 other characters that who are way more iconic and relevant than yes. light coal and dark coal you yes. know um they have to even go to like bioshock to get big daddies in there and bioshock is a multi-platform game that has no real association with playstation so um to to a large degree yeah their hardware is more of their history than uh, than characters are i was saying before but ben hansen on minmax was talking about how he 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 said asobi who work on this game have been behind sony hardware before including the ps5 like the team who, who make astrobot have also worked directly on the hardware he was saying and i was right. like wow that is really cool like to think that and you realize that when aspects of the levels link to the hardware directly and i won't get into that too deeply but it's very cool in that sense and the like the music is incredible as well it's like remixes you love the, the music from game. the original I absolutely Bot, love even though the original it's game. just one song in m- many different forms <laughs> in a lot of ways and this game does that to a degree it like remixes similar songs again and again and it's it's very i really loved the soundtrack um and like collecting so you collect one of the collectibles is like historical pieces of sony uh, playstation hardware so you have everything under the sun that you collect and you can then view in this room that it all collects into that and... room really does remind me of the plaza from nintendo land like just putting all those things in there um, yeah similar to yeah and it, it's 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 just a very satisfying collectathon and there's beyond the four levels there's a really nice payoff at the end that i won't spoil and i was like i've heard of this thing before and i like looked it up and it's a reference to this cool thing if you know your sony history so that's totally something that's worth unlocking and playing i don't know if you've been spoiled on that mbz i don't think i have no i've seen like i've seen maybe three of the four levels um, okay just just from uh footage just floating around on twitter and stuff like that but uh but yeah um, I mean, you know, I've even though I've seen a lot of it, it still seems like a fun thing to play through. Yeah. Um, even if it's quite short. Yeah. Also, like, in terms of length, that is where I think it falls down compared to like a Mario Odyssey. This like it is shorter. It's very simple. It's just it, it is like as cool as it is. It really is a tech demo and a showcase for the controller more so than a full video game as much as like it's well designed and it looks nice and it's satisfying. Um, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it has like cohesion in terms of theme or like it's it's not trying to create a new world it's like this is about playstation and its history yeah it, primarily it's tech demo number two it's a celebration of playstation and number three it's like a video game like it's <laughs> yeah exactly that totally and yes. but that's still a really enjoyable experience um so if you're coming into this like i'm looking for a really challenging 3d platform where it's like this is the wrong place this is more the collectathon um very easy kind of platformer uh, but having said that there are eight levels that you so one of the trophies you have to get under a certain amount of time across all of the these eight 
speed run levels together so four of the levels are based on the four suits from the four levels and four of the levels are um you know just astrobot running around so that's eight levels total and there's like world rankings and you can race your friends and it, it, it's so satisfying like trying to beat your times on those which is half the reason i've played like seven hours of this game because it is it's really fun to just go in there and improve on times and i'm really looking forward to like you getting a ps5 mbz when you can like try and beat my times and we can go back and forth trying to get the fastest time fastest times and if listeners want to play that game with me it's good fun yeah so that like that stuff is cool yeah what's your uh do you want people to add you on playstation if they have a ps5 because you were telling me you don't really have anyone i on, don't have any friends so everyone to add me i'm just ballyman91 i'm pretty sure that's how my name appears so that's b-a-l-l-y-m-a-n-9-1 same as my twitter account i try and keep exactly it, keep it all Very the same universal branding bally's on point here just loves exactly. it none, none of this emperor znb nonsense oh, like me uh, um, great well um is in terms of you didn't really talk too much about the triggers and their like resistiveness mm. but i have seen like footage of people showing like how they push back and they like rumble in through this weird way and just like don't let you press down is that there's like um there is a bow and arrow type of thing in astro that has that type yes. of tension to it right yes and it feels incredible like it, it it's I think it's combined with like there's this like rubber sound coming out of the speaker and it's just that that tension that crunch that like rubber on rubber sound that you could imagine like rubber bands it just sounds so real like and I I do think like as an overall experience when you're combined because it's a stunning game obviously I've talked about the music but combined with like this incredible feedback from the controller with every single little thing you're doing um it really is appropriate that the sequel to the VR game is this game because like VR is immersive in its own way and I think this is just immersive in a more 2D way you might say a less helmet way you know like on the, right, watch, yeah. looking at a game on the screen I should say so yeah stuff like the bow and arrow really makes you realize okay like this is next gen like for me the the things that scream next gen the most are obviously 4K um obviously 60 frames per second which is something games have already had obviously especially on pc but less so on console Mm -hmm. but also the dual sense like i think 4k and dual sense and that great frame rate is what makes the ps5 feel next gen for me so far and right uh, even though like visually the jump is not as stark as we have seen in the past between yeah and i think if you're coming off like a 1x or the ps4 pro i think the and you already own a 4k tv with those systems the jump might not feel as great but i would argue having not tried that jump the dual sense adds a level to that jump like it, it, i think it's something that microsoft will genuinely be thinking oh shit that's a, that that's cool like yeah <laughs> we should but, so here's the question though right is like to what extent does that even fucking matter because third parties will be making the majority of the games for this system you know it'll really only be sony who will focus 100 percent on making sure that those features are enabled and to some degree you know these features in the past have been abandoned by companies you know nintendo abandoned their 3d very early on in in their life cycle arguably um or even like didn't make it as big of a focus of the marketing how do you foresee the dual sense going in terms of companies using one of the things i've actually heard about is uh, call of duty and how it it uses the triggers and jeff gersman saying like man it's like it gets really tiring just having those triggers every time you're <laughs> shooting a gun like it's just better to turn them off because otherwise it just starts getting exhausting to play that game long term having this stuff just pushing back against you all the time yeah um that's interesting so two points on this first of all i, I would ask the question like what will dual sense be like in two to three years time and i think that i'm trying to think of another th- another gimmick as it were that was at launch of a system that years on i look back and think yeah i'm not that into it anymore i would compare i would say something like uh, the wii wii remote and like waggle like wii sports at the time was just like awesome and as much as i think we'd have a blast going back to wii sports now i think we a lot of the shine has come off it maybe and it's not quite like the i mean it's because that technology has just become so widespread that it's not uh, interesting or innovative anymore it's just like well yeah you can do that that's technology you know yeah um, i think not only is the technology more widespread but i think people are 
just bored you know like of like it's not in relation to vr it's cool sure like beat saber fine but like i think stand alone just waggling a wemo is now like a bit tiring and i do wonder will people think that about dual sense in three years i think right now the hype that astro's playroom has created and the feedback people have given about it has been so unbelievably positive that a lot of third parties especially like smaller indies are probably thinking yeah we should really do if, if we can tie up some indie deal with sony and get on that store and and really push like the haptic feedback you know in the dual sense i think that's onto a winner because i think there will be people who love astro's playroom so much for the dual sense and that vibration that they're going to want it in every game they can a bit like us with the 3d and 3ds it was like something yeah. we were really into i'd be surprised if the audience is as niche i mean think even with like hd rumble right hd rumble is a thing that at launch a bunch of games used it and even stuff like golf story right probably the best use of hd rumble of a non-nintendo game was golf story and since then there's really been nothing that has you know made it the forefront of conversation or anything that is specifically like at the start i think nintendo with the indie games was like you can be on our platform as long as you have like some specific integration with either hd rumble or you have some exclusive content or something like that and they seem to have really fallen off that and just not bothered with it anymore um and even in nintendo's own games it's not like it becomes a core part of the conversation um and i do wonder is that because the technology wasn't that appealing to people overall and so it faded away or is it just the natural thing of you know like the vita back touch or the microphone on the ds or like all these other even the touchpad on the original ps4 which i don't know has that have they changed that at all is that like higher fidelity the touchpad on on the dual sense um supposedly it is but i think it's hard to notice like it's the way it's utilized it's utilized in astro's playroom i won't say how but like um it feels fine i wouldn't say it changed okay. changed much what uh, the thing with astro's playroom in the dual sense is to to get the the vibration to the level and fidelity that they have done with that game requires a ton of effort like I, it, of course it, it, yeah like and when you compare it to miles morales which also uses like vibration in the dual sense in cutscenes and when you're doing certain things in miles morales you feel it and you're like wow that's really cool but it's so much less pronounced than Astro, where they've clearly just It's just turned... a more subtle, as opposed right. to, like, Astro is, like, hitting you over the head with it. Re- they really are. And I think the amount of work it takes to hit you over the head with it is so great that I would be fearful of other companies utilizing it. Even if it's, even if it's just a feature that ends up being first party only, I still think it's an awesome feature. Like, I'm always going to think that. I think it, I've, I've been sold on it so much that I think, wow, it's incredible. If I, I think we should also say that we are gimmick boys, like both of yeah, us we very much lean gimmick. into that shit and totally. love it. So, like Wii U uh, Gamepad, Nintendo Land, yeah. you know, that all that stuff was incredible. The three D, three DS, the waggle, the touchscreen on the DS, yeah. So, I like in that sense, that Astro's Playroom feels like a very Nintendo game in so many ways. Like it's got, it's very much like a Japanese ground. I mean, up for fuck's sake, game. you know, like he floats around like Mario Sunshine. Of course, you like this game. Yeah, you know? like his leg lasers are basically flood. Exactly. Like it's another reason I loved um, uh, Rescue Mission in VR. Like it's a very Nintendo game in that sense. Totally. Um, yeah. And I, I do like how Astro is like rooting himself as the playstation 5 mascot like he is so to me it's really interesting because he almost has no personality (laughs) and that's very much uh like shown in this game where you can just basically paste a different character on top of these little astro bots as cameos right like just give him a wig in this kind of dress and he looks like cat from gravity rush it's like well this character in and of itself is more of a cipher for other stuff and i guess has less personality as an individual character like he doesn't really feel like a character necessarily more like a you know i don't know a weird mascot to some degree um yeah but, yeah i think yeah. he's almost like the epitome of just like a, a faceless kind of character where right he, you enjoy his game for what he's doing not what he he says or does you know exactly like and especially narrative. because like it's not just one like you play as an astro bot but there's like hundreds of them they're all the right. same kind of faceless machines almost yeah to some yeah. degree um yeah so i mean just generally i'm very impressed overall i the dual sense is astounding it's definitely worth trying i am skeptical as to as we were saying how far it will go 
in the industry in the future i like 3ds and 3d i hope i imagine a game like horizon 2 forbidden west is going to go heavy on the bowstring shit right like that seems an obvious move for gorilla to make is to use that trigger stuff when you are fighting enemies um and then maybe use other you know if you're moving through grass maybe i was gonna say i think the thing because everyone was talking about the bowstring a ton it's the, the thing that surprised me the most was going on different surfaces but combined with being on different vehicles on different surfaces and the two of those feeling different to each other huh i won't okay. go further than that but like the 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 idea of riding on things in horizon and then feeling the different nature of things between sand metal stone right combined yeah. with the sound coming out of the the dual sense i think that stuff is probably going to be incredible like it, it and yeah. it already is very impressive in playroom and question uh, about sound real quick have you been playing with headphones at all or are you mainly just doing it out the tv speakers i've done some headphones i've mainly been doing tv speakers uh sound design is fantastic i don't think i can massively tell the difference between like ps4 and ps5 yeah. when it comes to sound because i mean you know mark cerny talking about sending people you know copies of their ears or whatever photos of their ears to make sure they do this weird sound nonsense but um yes i don't know how that will work yeah I, I don't know but um yeah real surprise of the year genuinely like astro's playroom is a must play uh especially from anyone of like nintendo background you know if you like mario games astro is a must play and even as someone who's only joined the whole sony first party bandwagon in 2018 i got so much out of all the nods like even the ones i wasn't massively aware of i was like oh yeah there's that game i remember that game and like that moment that happened so many times with playroom that i yeah. just felt so on board with it and if you are someone who's been following sony closely since the ps1 days you're going to get even more reward from like all these collectibles so yeah totally very cool, cool. very impressed um nice Astro's uh, Playroom. And then there's also the Spidey Man, which I finished uh, two weeks ago now, I guess. <laughs> so long ago now, who knows time. Um, but I blasted through Miles Morales. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it seems like you took your time with it a bit more, Bally. Yeah, I was like, there's not really a ton else on PS5 to play right now. Um, wow, does this game look and feel great? I think I now want to do everything that this game has to offer is basically uh-huh. my feelings. So yeah, yeah. going in... Uh, I was in, I was dying to try out the difference between 60 FPS at 4K and 30 FPS at 4K, but with um, added ray tracing. I, and everyone had been talking about this, and I was very interested to see what it felt like. So I immediately went into the 60 FPS. Bad call there. <laughs> you should have started with the 30 with <laughs> ray tracing. I went in with the 60 FPS, and, I was, and my mind was absolutely blown. Like, the combination of upping it to 4k and new york just looks incredible but then to move within that world at high speed at 60 frames per second felt unbelievable and it is it is the another coming to jesus moment or whatever that loads of pc gamers had years uh-huh. and years ago that loads yeah. of console gamers like myself are like coming to now uh, especially with a game like miles morales um it is eye-opening it is like i'm hugely in favor of like 60 fps now especially yeah I, I think it's one of those things that like 60 fps has existed before on consoles of course it has right like f-zero x on the fucking n64 ran at 60 frames per second however it has been very rare in recent times to have a big open world game that runs at 60 yeah. that just doesn't really exist on the console front like a big budget assassin's creed that runs at 60 and finally now we do have that right like valhalla yeah. runs at 60 on both these consoles a beautiful 4k new york city in winter then in 60 fps is incredible and i agree like f-zero x on n64 isn't quite as beautiful as 4k new york hey, it's beautiful I, in its own way buddy <laughs> all right like beautiful in its own way um and then i was like okay this feels incredible i'm ha- very happy with this experience let's try the um uh the ray tracing my god it was a mess <laughs> i just i i tried to put the idea of frame rate to the back of my head and i said let's just walk very slowly and like <laughs> try and look at the light and reflections and try and take it all in yeah did and, you like crawl on a building with like windows on yeah, it and stuff? Yeah, I, I tried all that and I'm like, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm not, I mean, I've not got an eye for this anyway, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling this right now. I, I, right. I don't see what I'm, I couldn't see that I was gaining 
sounds harsh. I couldn't see I was gaining anything. Uh, and yeah. obviously I was losing an absolute ton with the frame rate. Um, so I went back to 60 and that was how I played the rest of the game. Um, and yeah, like, wow, it just, it looks so good. I, I, be- I'm, I'm glad that my influence has finally come to bear after years and years of espousing yeah, totally. the and importance I think, of frame rate. I was saying uh, this before, but I think the faster the game, the bigger difference it will also make. And like Spider-Man is a very fast action game, whether you're swinging or in combat, like that frame rate is very important on on what it's doing. And I think what's very special about this game um is stuff like the lighting this is and i'm not talking about ray tracing i'm just talking about the lighting generally but a lot of the enemies in this game especially around bosses where you are smashing into glass and the enemies have like purple purple like particle effects that they are changing into um different weapons that they then throw at you and it's breaking and reforming and doing things like 60 frames per second combined with 4k on a playstation 5 with all those boss fights looks absolutely insane like the it- yeah i mean like just some of the particle effects going on just on ps4 and like the final boss fight for example wow. is just bananas right yeah like, it's-, shit it's just popping off all over the shop if you're like wanting to turn like sure like films and the marvel films look great but like the frame frame rate is way down and like if you um <laughs> but if you... i wouldn't i wouldn't go comparing like film to you know video games when it comes to that stuff because quite frankly when film runs at higher frame rate it looks really weird and it looks manufactured it looks like you're on a set it doesn't look like the filmic kind of thing you're going for 24 frames per second there's a reason why films are like that it's mainly because of you know uh just the history of it, it looks but bad. our brains yeah, <laughs> our brains are trained to see film at a certain yeah way yeah. and that's why when they did the hobbit in 48 frames per second people were like this looks fake and weird yeah. right so i would yeah. i push back against that i don't think that is a thing that you should be arguing that avengers would look better at 60 because it absolutely would not you'd think it looks weird no um, and i just I, the way it is i look forward to like how film evolves in the next 30 years and that negotiation and debate and how it evolves but but like fighting an enemy in in 60 frames per second with all those effects going on um i i cannot emphasize how incredible it looks um it's like if 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 you've currently owned a ps5 and you don't have a 4k tv and you think it looks really good i like i genuinely would consider getting a 4k tv in the next few years because i think the step up is very tangible um and yeah i'm 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 very impressed and that's the main motivator that made me want to like collect everything and what i mean by that is i went and got a gold in every single challenge in this game before i even got the second suit in the game so you start the game and you're in like his rookie suit and yeah i did basically most of the game in that suit, <laughs> in that suit pretty much so i played about five you basically just did s- all the side quests before even doing the first quest I mean, I, I, at every stage I, the unlocks happened where you could go and collect things, I'd go and get them all before doing anything else. And Yeah, I, totally. Yeah. I, I basically did the same thing. And I think Spider-Man's really good about that in terms of doling out the collectibles as you go. It doesn't just really vomit good, yeah. them all on the map at once. It's like, oh, okay, the sound quest where you go, you know, get Uncle Aaron's like sound samples across the city really happens cool. like 80, 80% through the game, yeah. which I think that's probably the weakest side quest, to be honest. There was one in like... Oh, weakest? I, I, really, I thought that was really cool um there was one in um uh, times square i think it was where i just couldn't fucking get it precisely and it was like you're too far you're t-, and then i go a step further you're too near and there was like this exact one specific place i had to stand yeah. to get it it was a little annoying i think the but, idea um, of it is nicer than the execution in part yeah the execution is, is just a little bit like this is a finicky, finicky. mechanic that yeah. isn't particularly fun yeah so but what I would say about Miles Morales generally on like trying to separate it from the whole this is a technical masterpiece that everyone needs to see <laughs> is like yeah I think this game genuinely cuts out all the all the weakest parts of 2018 and then just improves on the good elements so I think the strongest parts of 2018 were the story the characters um the world I think I think the supporting characters to Miles Morales as a character are fantastic and really involved in the story And I really enjoyed that aspect. But at the same time, there's none of these random science 
puzzles that you're doing in 20 from 2018 or likewise you're not walking around as mary jane doing stealth and all this sort of thing that i think really just kind of slowed down a lot of the pace with uh spider-man 2018 because as much as they're still like fighting and swinging in miles morales the moments where you are walking around it's a lot less let's make miles do stealth in in, like his non like his regular clothes and it's much more like let's have miles really engage with the characters around him in those moments and like talk about you know the losses he's had and the the people he cares about in his life and the situation of his family members and his friends and um that stuff i think is done incredibly well and i i I really really like this story and the way that all that tied together um and i think the main villain in in this game um i've forgotten his name now what's the blonde dude called something oh troy baker just hamming it up oh is it troy uh, baker very cool oh it's so obviously troy baker well, I'm, man. I don't I, this, care. this I is don't one of those things, things where like where once you have heard voice actors enough that like my god is that troy baker holy shit it is so clear to me like as soon as he opens his mouth i'm like okay right him again sure yep <laughs> let's do this i'm so impressed that they they take what's his name is it something krieger simon krieger simon think, krieger yeah. like I he's will... just so t- boring he's maybe one of the most boring like he, like obviously Troy Baker does a really good job but he has barely nothing to work with like he's the most mustache twirling hammy villain I've seen in a long time uh really not I wasn't that impressed with him really as a character, I loved honestly. he I he, loved his he's just he, such obvious like corporate CEO asshole like and no, it's just but not, he's not just like a in, flat out asshole like kingpin or someone like he's he's got this real snark to him that I loved like he's he's I, genuinely I, I, I've like, seen that character a million times that's the thing right he's but we've seen that character in Tony out. Stark not in a villain in the same way he's so oh, totally. Tony you Stark. see that in a villain all the time all the like time who? like he is such an obvious like that type of character like for me I don't. I'm I calling just, you out right now. I don't media. believe that is done in, in like villains. As Bali, I'm sorry, you just out. don't have the media literacy to like make that media argument. Media literacy. Not, We've I'm not. not I can't come, up, have read I can, any I can't comic come up with like. I can't come up with like specific examples on top yeah, of my head. Think, but, like that is a cardboard cutout villain. It, right. It really is. is, it just is. Sure. He's like a big tech guy who has this chemical that's yes. doing all this shit. I get that. Yes. He's cardboard yeah. cut in that sense. But the snark yeah. and the, the the wisecracks is so Tony Stark. And the fact that in a Marvel mm. universe they flip Tony Stark character into a villain is cool and unique and awesome. And I really like. He's he's like meant to be like Elon Musk. You know, it's great. I love that. Yeah. I mean that that's the thing. Like that character I've seen a million times before. Um, it's just nothing interesting. He was maybe the most boring part of that game for me by far. Really? Um, but God. sure, we can we can disagree. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> he's absolutely a nothing character. In in five years' time, I will not remember. You can't even remember. Obviously, we're different with remembering names, but name uh, does not. I, will, I won't remember him at all. You know, like he's you know he's so fucking forgettable. Um, but there, you know, there's a different. There's more interesting. Um, you know relationships that miles has than that one like that's just like we have to have a an evil corporate ceo basically um but you know there there's other conflicts let's say that happen near the end of that game that are far more interesting which will be more memorable to me because they you know they have actual stakes as opposed to what he does so but yes yeah and they, and they like do lots of stuff with different factions which is very similar to the first game um and the dlc from the first game that had more factions in it so like um it does feel a bit like not cardboard cut out that's the wrong word but like you need multiple factions so that you have multiple different types of enemies for miles to face so that in a sense can sometimes feel a little bit manufactured um yeah but hey that's that's comic books that's just it's you know, video games yeah. right like what you're gonna do <laughs> you need like a hundred dudes to run at you so yeah you need like the the underground or whatever they're called to to you know just spawn out of everywhere and and, and be annoying and stuff like that but yeah. um but yeah i mean like the combat is, is definitely i think the combat is improved in terms of having the venom powers and just the ability to smash people and you know lift them in the air and and how do you use the gadgets much at all yeah i think it's very clear this game doesn't want you to use the gadgets as much as the as the first game because it's giving you four gadgets rather than like 16 or something crazy in the i think it's like eight gadgets in the first yeah game. no it's i i think actually that um 
giving you less to work with makes it so that you're more i felt less intimidated by it because you know when you had all those other ones i was like i don't i don't want to use any of these and it's not necessary for me to finish yeah the game, so i, I never prefer this game in that sense that it's just more streamlined yeah. and it's obviously mixed with the venom powers when you can like combine the powers and it's very satisfying to use and you said unlock more and more powerful venom powers that just get more and more crazy as the game goes it's very cool and like again the, those venom powers i think link to the whole 4k like visual s- incredible stunning feature like i just think this game does well that um i think that all that synergizes so well together into like just a very satisfying experience yeah yeah definitely um, um but yeah uh i just love this world i really really love this world i think that having a new york with two spider-mans is fantastic and i love the questions this game raises about like like you have the characters on the street who are like it's the new spider-man and they'll say he's the he's not spider-man yet or that they don't know what to call him because he's not the existing spider-man and that but he's new on the block and people are like it's they, they essentially want to call him the fake spider-man but then by the end of the game they're very much like Oh yeah, he is Spider Man. You know, and he's it, our Spider. He's our Spider Man. That's a very yes. good line that's like used. And yeah, the whole dynamic um, about uh, Harlem, and as we've said, the the evil guy Krieger, and his, his focus on Harlem is very well portrayed. And um, yeah, I think that stuff from a story perspective, and and how it builds Miles as a character, is very impressive. And it's so satisfying that that's taking place within the wider world of the 2018 peter parker spider-man game um and then obviously we're gonna have some sort of third game where they come together and i mean i really do hope in that third game you are playing as both of them switching back and forth to some degree right like that would be cool um and i wonder i do wonder do they do they kill off pete and then miles becomes the face of the series going forward or something like that no that's something i think this game and the other game really good at is they're not scared of taking bold decisions like that totally and, yeah 100 percent. yep and i <laughs> think agreed. that i wouldn't put it past them and i hope they do something like that and it, yeah no, you know like, like you know like, like character armor and characters dying or not dying and things yes. like that i think both these games yeah. are really good where you're pretty fearful for everyone all the time i feel like marvel as a series has a lot of character uh, armor just generally Who? you know marvel just as a franchise has a lot of character yeah. armor you know yes um and uh yeah i feel like insomniac are kind of throwing off those uh those gloves and being like no nope, not yeah. here. anyone anything can happen you know and i think they do a really good job of we've only had two games but there's like so many villains they've already portrayed and you know they're the, they're the one thing that they don't really kill off in this game where they constantly get arrested and break out of prison and do this again so like i love that they have just so many villains with all their like chat going on that feels incredibly like spider-man in that sense where one of my favorite things about the first game was fighting but chatting with the enemy at the same time and i think this game does that again very well um it feels very video game oh yeah i didn't i never mentioned this on uh, the last nintendo episode but um i really like you know the in the first game you have uh j jonah jameson's radio show his like basically alt-right conspiracy show yeah and now you have an alternative which is like progressive leftist uh podcast from yes. uh, danica what her name yeah, is I yeah. remember. um which I, I i appreciated them having a, a balance there and like throwing that in as the the counterpoint to you know uh the, the crazy guy yeah which was like cool. this game generally just has so much chat across so many characters constantly going on outside of cutscenes that feels so well done um it's, it's one of those things that makes you want to swing around the city because yeah. he'll have a conversation with his mom or some something else will happen like you'll put on a podcast like you'll get all of that stuff as a incentive for you to just go to your objective not via fast travel essentially yeah that, like it, it's it's all good incredibly impressive i said i would say the one time that this doesn't work out is when you're going for those challenge golds and you've got peter parker okay. talk, talking to you on on like virtual peter parker talking to you because hollow pete hollow pete exactly and he's got three lines basically that he says and when you restart if you're restarting a mission about 20 30 times to get that gold you've heard those same three lines so many times <laughs> that, that you're kind of like yeah, I wish they would just make this silent after maybe yeah, the six, just shut up, just shut time. up. Let me focus um, on this because if 
it's weird that they have those golds there knowing that people are going to replay it that many times but also just have pete on the same three line loop again and again it's like one of these has to give i'd, I'd like to see like just to be able to toggle that off like <laughs> yeah you've, you're attempting this for the 10th time would you like to toggle pete off yes okay yes and before moving on so that's the one time that i think it, it it backfired a little but that's a very minor gripe in what i think it's just an incredible game overall and like i said irons out so many of the flaws with 2018 as like this game isn't doing anything crazy new but it's just ironing out a really great formula that they had from 2018 and making it better which i think is what anyone everyone wanted from this game really um and world building wise really strengthens that character the world more widely and yeah, bring on Spider-Man 3 or whatever they call that. I think they'll just call it Spider-Man 2 probably because this is a like Spin sub-story sub almost. Story, yeah. Miles Morales, yeah. yeah. So. Lost Legacy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, all in favour of more Lost Legacy style Miles Morales games. Because, I totally agree, um, right? Like they, um, I think, I don't know if you've listened to the spoiler cast that Kind of Funny did yet, but they were talking about how this was a two-year development cycle for them and how they would like to do that more often because so often with big games like this it's a much longer kind of ramp up right four years at a minimum at this point in time for a, a big budget triple a game and so the idea that you can turn out one of these every two years i think is probably quite an appealing prospect for some studios um and just being able to get stuff out there more quickly um because you know back in the ps3 era studios could do that with big games right they could do assassin's creed two volume well, they still do that today but that's just because ubisoft teams of like three thousand people or whatever um but your traditional studio like naughty dog did three uncharted games like two years apart each basically um and same with you know the infamous games and stuff like that so so it would be nice to get back to that kind of cadence because at the moment we're in this place where you know we probably will barely get the third god of war game by the tail end of the ps5 generation if that you know? I mean, Horizon's going to be three years apart, and that's probably going to be like a 40, 60 hour game again. So, like, yes, they, they, yeah. they can break the rule when they want to or need to. And um... I mean, a part of it is also for those games, Horizon and God of War, they have now established themselves with new engines and stuff like that. And yes. a lot of the legwork of creating the new ip for horizon and in some cases new ip for god of war with how radical a change it was has been done and that is a lot of you know the harder part of it so the fact that they now have a bit more established it makes it probably faster than for them to do sequels but still you know they, they definitely want to challenge themselves i'm sure and do bold things with the new console so who knows how long it takes for these types of games but um yeah in any case uh yeah i mean you know you've still got a bunch of uh games on the ps5 that a potential for you to play i know you're eyeing up pathless at the moment yeah as well. i really want to play the pathless um and then it's just weighing up whether i want to get ps plus for a little bit and play some of those games or not really maybe bug snacks maybe stuff like it's just ps4 games really so it'd be stuff like last guardian um detroit become humans and one i want to try out so i don't know mm -hmm. i i think what will the next actual big game be? Probably something like Ratchet and Clank, I imagine, which will... Yeah. Might be summer, it might be spring next year, we'll see, but... Um, I think, was it confirmed for Q2 next Q2? year? Q2, that'd be good. Yeah, um, maybe, I'm not sure. So yeah, I think, I'm very in, I'm very excited, I think. Um, cool. It's, it's a good I, system. I do wonder, like, to what extent are you, once you're done with pathless maybe and you you kind of are waiting for the next thing how long will your ps5 sit there not being used while you go and you switch you see that's why i bought spider-man remastered because yes I can <laughs> so just, you always like, have something i to can chip dip away in at. and dip out of it and re and like get a platinum with that game get all the gold challenge medals oh or whatever God, like, and see how many the problem i think one of the best things about miles morales is like all right hideouts there's only six of them i was like fuck yes only six i'll do those and be done because there are so fucking many in the original spider-man i'm just like i don't want to do these there's so it's just too much it but was if too i'm much just chilling getting trophies listening to a podcast yeah. playing that 4k 60 you know I, I i i enjoy that like i never got tired yeah. of the um the combat in the first game and for sure they definitely lather it on especially in the dlc again um a lot of fighting yeah but yeah um here's a question you now own one of the next gen consoles Mally. how long will it be until you crack and buy a series x what what is your timeline your theoretical timeline for when series x enters your life uh, it, it's either going to be halo infinite yeah or it's going to be new forza 
Okay. Or it's going to be like a build up of me playing so many games on Game Pass that I know are going to be optimized for Series X or already have been optimized for Series X that I think. Yeah. I'm playing so much Game Pass right now that maybe I should just get a Series X now. Like. It's also one of those things where you could, with Xbox, it makes sense to just sell your Xbox One S, right? Like, you don't need that thing around anymore. It's kind of just a worse version of what the Series X is in so many ways um, because it can play literally everything that the One S can already. Um, so I-, I know you and I don't tend to sell our consoles generally, but it's the it's one occasion where I look at it and I'm thinking like, there's no reason to keep that around once you have a uh, a Series X going. Yeah, so. yeah, totally. Um, and like at the moment, my PS4 is very much like the PS VR box. And also Caroline is playing a lot of games on PS4. And it's quite one thing with not having multiple suspend points on PS5 is she can just have this PS4 suspended. I play PS5, she plays PS4, and then we can like right. swap at some point. And she, because she, I yeah. think she wants to give Astro and like Miles Morales a go in this one. Yeah, how long stuff. is it until you have multiple 4K TVs in your living room oh next God. to each other? <laughs> yeah, I, pff, no, not for a while. I don't, I yeah, don't know. Probably need a bit more space for that. Yeah, I think, I, yeah. I think multiple TVs just look really ugly as well. Like in the living room, yeah, they look, it looks. I do, I do kind of like the idea of it though, you know, I do like the it's idea like, of it. But. It's the kind of thing that that guy Krieger would have in his living room. He'd have multiple <laughs> TVs. Absolutely. Um, and it's Absolutely. like, I don't want to be him. So. He's the kind of dude who would have a TV in his bath, right? Like just on the wall in front of him. Yeah. He's like in a hot tub or whatever. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, God. Yeah. Yep. Uh, cool. I think that probably wraps us up uh, on the PlayStation 5 chat uh thanks everyone for listening if you would like more of this as we mentioned at the top of the show you can head on over to patreon.com slash this nintendo life uh where you can support us for one dollar a month uh, and you will get access to other non-nintendo video game chatter um bali uh we'd like to thank some patrons who make shows like this possible yes thank you to our ten dollar patrons they are zach s atari alex thomas matthew and my fiance caroline thank you all for your ten dollar tier support uh, but as mb said said if you support us for a single dollar a month you have access to all episodes of this non-tendo life which we will we currently release once a month uh we've actually got our non-tendo game of the year coming up in a couple yes. of weeks time so yeah. yeah we've been playing i think we listed 11 games that we played this year that were non-tendo so yeah i think we're going to be making a top five combined list for that in mm-hmm. a couple of weeks which will be a fun debate um so yeah you won't want to miss that for a dollar absolutely um cool well you'll uh, obviously you'll get another episode next week a uh, regular show and that will be our old video game of the year top that th- th- didn't come out this year uh list which will be a fun where one. we each Always make uh, a list of 10 per- a personal yes. list yes personal list of 10 uh, and then the, uh, the show after that will of course be our big um game of the year nintendo game of the year top uh well <laughs> <laughs> we're saying now top 10 we don't we'll well i'll, I'll finalize the details of the value of that and make sure we'll yeah, uh we're we'll having a think about it the, we're having a think about it um but uh yes uh that will be enjoyable and uh, should be seen but uh thanks everybody for listening we'll be back uh in a little bit until then thanks everybody and uh we'll see you soon bye-bye folks <laughs>